Hello. In this exercise we're going to be using multiple regression techniques to understand the age of death of a number of 19th and 20th century statisticians. The predictive variables that we're going to be using are their birth year and their death year. Now of course this isn't really a, a type of problem that would typically involve multiple regression uh, because we can get a very good approximation of the age of death of any of these individuals by simply taking the birth year away from the death year. Of course uh, there will be a little bit of uncertainty depending on whether they die before their birthdays or after their birthdays but it's still a very close approximation. However, we'll use this multiple regression uh, just so that we can actually look at the overall process. And here are the data that I've read in. Uh, there's a variety of statisticians here listed in this uh, data set. It's a common delimited file. And the first thing uh, that we should do is simply uh, plot a graph of the age of death uh, according to uh, a certain predictor. And this is what we're going to uh, be looking at here. So let's have a look. Here's the date of birth of the statistician. And uh, here is the age. And we've simply called up a, uh, a plot uh, using text here to uh, give the uh, individual titles just so that we can actually see the labels uh, here underneath uh, each of these points. Now uh, what we would like to do first of all is to begin to explore what predictive variables might influence uh, that response. Now typically we'd jump straight to the multiple regression but here we're going to uh, take it in smaller steps. So first of all I'm going to fit a model and it's going to be a simple linear regression model of the age of death and see how it might depend on the uh, birth year, the uh, date of birth. Well we fitted the model using the LM routine and uh, here is the analysis of variance associated uh, with that model. And what we can see uh, here is that there is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis that age and birth year uh, are uh, entirely uh, independent of one another. We can reject the null. We can't reject the null hypothesis that the population level coefficient is zero because we have a relatively high value of uh, significance probability. So now let's move on and actually uh, look to see whether the uh, death year might influence the age on death. So here we're going to fit another uh, linear regression model with age on death uh, and to see whether it might be dependent on the death year. So here is the analysis of variance table after fitting that simple linear regression model. And here we see that we can indeed reject the null hypothesis that there is no relationship between age on death and death year in that the probability of us obtaining that test statistic or a more extreme if the null hypothesis is true is really very small. So we have evidence that uh, there is a relationship between death year and age on death. What way does it look? Well we can simply ask for the coefficients and uh, it seems that from the gradient here of 0 0.147 uh, it appears that um, the uh, age to which these statisticians were living uh, tends to uh, increase with the uh, uh, year of death. Now let's just go uh, a step or two further. Let's have a look at the fit of a proper multiple regression model in which we fit both predictors both death year and birth year and see their combined role on the age of death. And here uh, is the fit of the model and here is the analysis of variance table. Now you'll note that here we're using type 1 sum of squares by default in R and it seems that both death year and birth year in these cases are both highly significant. Well. Why has birth year gone from low significance uh, uh, here, so not really very significant, to uh, very highly significant? 
we have to bear in mind that with a type 1 sum of squares we are controlling for the effects of other predictors uh, above it in the list. And so here, when we're looking at the effect of birth year on the age of death, we are controlling for death year. So the birth year does indeed have a relationship on the age of death once we can control for death year. You'll note also that the significance of death year has improved considerably. Why is that? Because we're not controlling for birth year at all. Well, we're not controlling for birth year, but we are uh, affecting our overall estimate of the uh, error variability in our data by adding new terms. And so it happens in this case that the significance of both uh, individual predictors have uh, gone up. Let's have a look at the coefficients here. And uh, here we see something uh, that we were sort of expecting already. The coefficient for death year is approximately 1, and the coefficient for birth year is approximately minus 1. And here we'll note that the intercept is uh, something about 6, but remember these values here are in their thousands, so this intercept really won't have very much effect at all. So what we're seeing here is that very approximately the age to which the statisticians lived and uh, of course we're trying to make wider inferences about statisticians in general uh, we can simply take their death year uh, and birth year and take uh, the birth year from the death year and we will have approximately how long they lived. So we're getting something reassuringly uh, intuitive from the fit of our model. Now. I'm going to load the library car, which has got a type 3 sum of squares, and you remember a type 3 sum of squares uh, simultaneously adjusts for the effects of all of the predictors uh, in the model. So what we're going to do is, with that model 3 that we have just fitted, ask in this case uh, for a type 3 sum of squares partitioning. And here you'll see uh, quite clearly uh, that both death year and birth year have a very highly significant effect on that response age of death once you control for the effect of the other uh, variable. Now it just remains to evaluate the underlying assumptions uh, in our models. Um, the first uh, thing we should be doing is simply uh, testing for homogeneity of our residuals and uh, that looks uh, pretty good when it comes to evaluating. What about now uh, looking at the normality uh, of those residuals? Well, here we have something uh, of uh, concern. If we really wanted to make inferences about the lives of statisticians rather than simply treat this as an exercise, uh, then uh, that QQ plot really does suggest that we have got uh, relatively non-normal data. Let's have a look at uh, this in terms of just looking at the histogram. Uh, here is the standardized residuals uh, from that fitted model and we can plot them out. So it looks something of a bivariate distribution although we should bear in mind that we're not currently dealing with a great deal of sample data here. So if we were going to make important inferences uh, about that population uh, other than uh, treat this as a, a simple teaching exercise then we would have to do something about that uh, uh, problem of lack of normality and of course we'll get on to those sorts of uh, uh, problems later on.